boom. Oh, it scared you because it's Halloween. Uh, happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, man. I hope but it's a wonderful, blessed, charity-filled Halloween. That's Christmas. Mm. I hope it's a lovely chocolate. That's Valentine's Day. I don't know. What's this holiday about? I think it's about trick or treating. Okay. Then that's the one. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to have. A happy trick or treat. A happy trick or treat. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure everyone has their Halloween rituals in place. Uh, I know I I actually, my one of my most fond memories of Halloween is um, uh, when I was with my fellow students in uh, not Humber, but Sheridan, mm -hmm. uh, they had a ritual that at a very specific time of Halloween, they would sit down and watch Nightmare Before Christmas. And then when uh, when Jack went to Christmas Town, it went right to November 1st. That's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's that's a creative way to do that. I've never been um, a fan of Nightmare Before Christmas, and I know I'm Ooh, a minority. Oh, yeah, I, I remember you said that. That was a very controversial thing, you know? Yeah, it was not for me. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I love when people do creative things like that, like with the whole... You watch A New Hope at a certain time on New Year's Eve and the Death Star blows up on at midnight. Oh, you know, for sure. I yeah. tried to do that last New Year's and I was off by like half a minute. It was, yeah, it was disappointing. But uh, this is Infinity Rewatch, which is never disappointing. Nope. You're Ryan. That's right. And you're Andrew. Mm -hmm. And this is a special one against the Halloween episode. Yeah. That's why we're back together again, live on camera here. And uh, yeah, it's, this is a very special episode. We, we teased this a couple times mm -hmm. that we were going to be doing this. And so what exactly are we doing? Oh boy. Okay. This is, you ever played fantasy football or fantasy baseball or any of those fantasy sports? I, I have never played it, but uh, I, I know people who have. I'm very familiar with the fantasy leagues. Yeah. They create their draft, right? They draft their team. Mm -hmm. and that's what you and I are doing. We're drafting teams. Oh. You've got a team of 10 people and I got a team of 10 people. Yeah. But it's not just any 10 people. Is this Halloween? In case you can't tell, I'm messing up my microphone. It's Halloween. Oh. So we're going with scary people. We're going with Marvel villains. Marvel villains that we want to see in the MCU. That's right. Because right. they have not appeared in the Marvel Cinematic Universe yet. And we think it's high time that they should. I, I agree. I think that, that we're I think we're at such an exciting point where like we don't know the entire phase plan yet. Like we just, um, yeah, we don't know the entire phase plan yet. So we're at that that new precipice of adventure and all the new introductions of characters and villains. And Marvel honestly has an amazing amount of villains. Like they have an incredible rose gallery, but they've tossed out quite a few already. Like they're they're cutting they're cutting pretty thin now. Yeah, they're going through. It was hard to to come up with ten that haven't been used that should be used. Yes. Um, but you make a good point. Like we we know roughly. Okay, they gave us Kang. Yeah. We know Kang's gonna be a big deal, but there's no sort of end game in mind. Mm -hmm. How we knew Thanos was coming for a long time. So a lot of these people are still up in the air. They could very well show up in the next movie. In Eternals, we could see five of the people on both of our lists. I, as far as we know. And that's the thing. This was an interesting list. And I was going to talk about it when we start introducing certain characters. Um, but here's the thing. I would say there's a couple of confirmed but not confirmed yet. Yeah. For example, Storm and Norman is technically confirmed. Is he really? Oh, yeah, from in No Way Home. Yeah. Yeah, technically. Mm -hmm. um, and then that also begs the question with the whole Sandman thing, is he confirmed, right? right. And Sandman's a pretty big villain. Like, he's yes. a pretty massive villain. Um, he's been a part of the Wild Pack, uh, and on top of that, he's joined the Avengers at one point. So, oh yeah, he's been, he's been around as an interesting character. Uh, also, there was another big one that I wanted to, uh, to lay to rest here. Okay. Technically, we know Doctor Doom is coming. We know he's coming, but we haven't seen him yet. There's been no confirmation, yeah. nothing. But we have to assume that MCU, they have to. Like, it's kind of a given. Come on. Fans, agree with me here. This is a given, all right? This is legit a given. We know Doctor Doom's coming. Here's, here's the thing, though, about Doom. 
And we know Fantastic Four, the movie, is coming. Yes. But remember, when Iron Man 1, the movie, was coming, everybody was like, oh, and we're ready to hop on the Mandarin train. And then look what happened. We got three Iron Man movies before we ever heard whispers of Mandarin. Mm-hmm. I think, and we talked about this before, I think they're going to try to go the subversive route because that's what they're good at. And they won't give us Doom in that first movie. At least not as the primary villain. Fair, fair. I, th- but that's my point, though. We like they're, If he's not the first movie, if they pull an Iron Man, they give us something like Mole Man right out of the mm-hmm. gate, then we know the Doctor Doom's coming. Like, we know, we just know. It's, it's so obvious. But that being said, that's why with m- at least my list... Those kind of characters I knew are coming, so I didn't put them in my list. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we talked about on our last What If podcast, we asked each other how many crossovers we think we're going to have. Yeah. And I think you said three and I said two. Yes. Is that the number? Okay. So. Who's going to start first? I I don't know, man. Should we rock, paper, scissors? Okay. Let's rock, paper, scissors. And we'll cheat because we're talking about villains. Okay. Right. Uh, best one out of one or two out of three? How are one out of one, one like one. one shot, one go. Okay. All right. Rock, Rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. Yay! Oh, okay. All right. And by me winning, I'm going to let you go first. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's generous, man. All right. Okay. This is the farthest thing from a villain you could ever meet right here. This guy. Mm-hmm. He puts heroes to shame. Let's <laughs> All right. So, number t- I find whenever I'm doing a, a list of 10 anything, Number 10 is always the hardest one. Yeah. Um, and I, I flip-flopped a couple things for number 10. But what I ended up going for, for number 10, is somebody who whose existence would just make the movie better. Okay. And that's Moonstone. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so how would Moonstone be introduced into the MCU? Interesting choice, though. <sighs> See, I don't know much about her as a person to say like this is would be a way a cool way to bring her in all i know is captain marvel 2 colon the marvels needs a villain that can stand up to being punched by carol mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it needs carol to be afraid of getting punched back because we have not seen that yet yeah so that is the only one i know who would look cool and, you know, they could do some cool things with her, her costume and everything, uh, that could stand up to her and pose a threat and create this whole movie where you need her to dial it back and go with these two people who are like, hey, what's up? I'm just this young girl who can stretch and I'm your friend's daughter. We're going to team up because you need friends to help you beat this person. You can't do it alone like you usually do. Mm -hmm. Moonstone seems like the kind of person who can set that that ball rolling. Yeah. Moonstone's kind of an anti-hero though too. So you can really use that character on all sorts of fronts. Interesting choice. Interesting choice. I, I'm going to curate my list in order to relate to the topic in which we were discussing. So mm-hmm. you talked about uh, Moonstone. You talked about Captain Marvel. So you're in the realm of cosmic. So you're talking about space. Mm-hmm. Um, I My first entry on the list is Deken and the Shi'ar Empire. Whoa! Yeah. So the reason why I chose this, and it kind of fits with your with your Captain Marvel the Marvels theory, uh-huh. uh, because I think not only can you do the Phoenix Saga in a unique way, because technically, yes, we've seen it with Fox, and people don't hate it, but we all know it's it's not a question of whether you like it or not. It's a question of the MCU is going to do it better and how. Right. So if they decide to, like, I think what they could do is essentially carry over the X-Men and leave it on the Phoenix Saga note and then have the trial of Jean Grey and have the epic battle in space, but then also have Captain Marvel, like, interfere and try to help and try to take out the Phoenix, like, all that kind of stuff. So that's why I would kind of like Decan and the Shi'ar Empire for that. Nice. Yeah. I don't know how we both hovered around that area for yeah. our, our number times. But and like the other thing too is like you can literally start with uh, the Star Jammers and Corsair, yes. and then you could have him meet the new X Men and being like, "Oh, we found like we found Jean. She's alive. She's a dangerous, super dangerous force, protector of the Empire and Crystal and all this stuff." Like we know the story, so you don't have to. You you could do montage flashbacks. You can do all sorts of quick things to get this ball rolling. But what I love about it is again, like just the scale of storytelling you can do with the cosmic. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Star Jammers was its own movie. It could be, 100%. If Guardians worked, Star Jammers will work. Oh, yeah, for sure. And like, and even the Cyclops, like the Corsair and Cyclops story, you can just run. Oh, yeah. And there's, there's a guy on Star Jammers in the cartoon, and he had a name that sounded dirty. And I was like, I'm, I'm picturing this being a Marvel movie, and all these kids are like, ooh, 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 ooh. What are, what are the names of some of the people on Star Jammers? He was like a big alien guy or something. There was like War Child. That's like, I feel like that's one of them. I don't know off the top of my head, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I have to look that up. But yeah. his name sounded almost like a dirty word, and it made me giggle. Mm-hmm. All right. Good number 10s. You got some solid Good, say, Yeah, solid 10s. Yeah. Good way to start. So far, no crossover. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that'll change very soon. Uh, I Honestly, so. I, I give it like just a matter of time, because yeah. eventually we're going to land. I'm thinking you and I are going to land on a specific villain if we haven't. Okay, hold on. There's Chode, Crease, Corsair. Chode. Chode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right at the top. Yeah, Chode, uh, Corsair, Corvus, Raza, Long Knife, Cyclops, Hep, Hepizaba, Sikorsky, and Waldo. Ooh, I wonder where Waldo is. That was painful. You're welcome. It was painful. You're welcome. It was painful for all of us. <laughs> all right. So that being said, there you go. We got the we got the Star Jammers. We're in the cosmic right now, right out of the gate for number ten. Yeah. For me, I'm gonna say disclaimers here. I feel like it's not like a like it's just this is the number ten. It's not like the number one's like the absolute best unless you planned it that way. I I did. Okay, I, I, all right. From the for, order, I want to see like the least to the most. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, I like I said with mine. There's no, there's no real standing order here, but I, that's oh, why I'm, I'm gonna play off of you. I'm gonna play off of you a little bit here. Uh, well, I, I'm sure your number one is significant. I'm gonna double check, but yes, it's, yeah. it's pretty significant. All right. Your number one is like Bob the Hydra. Yeah. Uh, Hydro Man. <laughs> Hydro Man. <laughs> Mary Jane, it's all for you. Um, <laughs> so my number nine is is I don't know if it's gonna be an issue because technically he was in the MCU, mm-hmm. but. In a certain sense. And uh, that would be my friend, the leader. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, that this is another character I was talking about where it's like, we've, this character is confirmed in the MCU. Like, legit. We've yeah. Seen Samuel Stearns is in the MCU. The leader has not been a thing. Even though they hinted with their bulging forehead veins, it's just not the same until he's green and he's got an orange leotard and he's fighting the Hulk with robots. Yeah. So the leader, to me, can be a villain, at least the way the MCU would do it, he could be a villain that takes himself more seriously than the movies do. Uh-huh. Like uh, like the cartoon, the super amazing cartoon. Yes. <laughs> I love that cartoon. So um, good. Like, I want him to have a bigger part than this, but I'm thinking like along the lines of how they handled Strucker. Oh, Like okay. he's, he's there, he's doing something, he's like, I got this plan, um, but it's not going to end well for him. And it's almost comical how it doesn't end well for him. But mm-hmm. I think he should get something a little meatier and more significant than Strucker did. Okay. Uh, but I I feel like he just fits into the world, especially the way he was in the cartoon. Even like, you know, it wasn't the cliche thing where his underlings were like, yes, master, whatever you say. Like his underling there, the gargoyle was like, oh my God, I have to listen to this guy. <laughs> it was a really cool dynamic they had. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I want to see some leader. All right. Very cool. I agree with this. I agree. I agree with where you're headed. So I I will meet your leader and I will say this one doesn't relate. I don't I don't think I have a villain on this that relates to any Hulk kind of gamma worldish oh, okay. experience. So I'm going to jump right into just my next villain that I'm hoping for. And I'm going to say Dracula. Oh my God. I forgot he counts. He counts. He counts as a Marvel villain and a hundred percent. I think it's a good reason because he's kind of like the Lord of the Underworld. And here's the thing. We all play on the joke of Mephisto confirmed. We all want Mephisto. But I feel like we're in that tension now where you want to just keep alluding to it, but never say that Mephisto is in the MCU. Mm -hmm. And so I think Dracula is kind of a good dodge and kind of still but keep that tension there. So uh, Dracula actually has a lot of stories that involved, obviously, Blade. We saw the, the third Blade movie, which... I feel like they kind of gave up at that point because the first two were just like so definitively solid 
as like entries, but Dracula is a key character to help really kick off not only Blade, but help kick off other characters like Ghost Rider, the Night Stalkers, mm -hmm. and like do those kind of Midnight Sun storylines that we're starting to see now in video games with uh, with um, uh, Marvel Midnight yeah, Suns, fun. yeah. And so, so that I think is is kind of it's kind of a good villain to help create that area of Marvel, the supernatural area, and and really push that forward. Okay, interesting. I see now that that reminds me of something that we're about to get, and it's something that I wonder. I'm curious how it will be handled by adult fans and how it'll be handled by young fans. Yeah. I feel like it'll be different, which is the idea that in Thor 4, it sounds like we're getting Hercules. Right. Uh, who is a Marvel character, but I'm, I'm curious about the people, you know, who don't know the comics all too well. Right. To be watching a movie about Spider-Man. Yeah, I mean, to be watching a movie where Spider-Man's in it or whatever, you know, the Hulk is in it, and all of a sudden it's like, who's that guy? That's Hercules and Dracula. Like, will people laugh or will it will it kind of be welcomed into the fold? Because so far, the Marvel Universe has been very Marvel-y. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously Thor was not invented by Marvel, but his popularity kind of took root in Marvel, whereas Hercules is popular already. Right. Uh, and the same with Dracula. So I'm so curious, what, what do you think people will do reaction-wise when it's like, Who's that guy we're fighting, Steve Rogers? Oh, that's Count Dracula. Like, I think I think with the Marvel formula, you need to do exactly what they've done with uh, certain other characters until like the last possible minute, and that is is that you you make them think it's that person, and that person doesn't really address it's that person until much later on. Oh. Like like for example, Crossbones. Like Crossbones, I don't think ever we got to the point where he says he's Crossbones. We just we learned that he is. Um, so I think with uh, with Dracula, it's it's kind of like a what's in the name. It doesn't matter. It's it's how you sell the story. Uh, and I, I'm actually going to pivot a little bit here. And through that, I'm going to say that not only will we get Dracula, but we get his daughter Lilith. And Lilith is a big uh, a big Marvel villain in terms of just bringing in again more demonic forces. Also playing a more significant role with the Darkhold yes. and agents of the Darkhold. So. Um, again, it's, it's really going to help bring out the Midnight Suns, the supernatural side, which will help kind of, and the reason why I say this as an MCU kind of idea is because it's going to help bring in characters like Blade. It's going to give them all a reason to cross paths. Blade, Ghost Rider, Doctor Strange, you know, Moon Knight, all those characters can now intersect and, and have more of a reason to get together and do things, especially too, because there's a couple of loose ends here that we need to tie up in, in terms of the MCU. And I want to get that book that apparently talks about everything. Uh, but it's still kind of in, it's still in the gray area, although most people are saying it's confirmed, but they're saying things like the runaways, uh, which was the character from the runaways that plays a very significant role in midnight suns as well, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, but she's very cool. She has the staff of the giant ring. Is it Gertrude? She's the only one no, I know. Her no. and the dinosaur. I feel like it, no, I feel like it's like a mix or something, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so the Runaways, and also I'm gonna save the other one to talk, Cloak, or sorry, Cloak and Dagger is another one that's kind of unsure because those projects were more closely managed by Kevin Feige. Right. So, and then there's the third one, but I won't, I won't say what it is yet until I introduce my next villain. But anyway, so are those characters in the MCU? If they are, then that kind of may adjust my list a little bit. But my point is, is that a character like Lilith will bring in the Runaways a little bit because of the mysticism they have. And then we'll bring in Ghost Rider and bring in, you know, Doctor Strange and Blade. So we can really kind of have that playground, that sandbox, if you will, and have those characters have a reason to get together. Yes, and they have their own little mini Avengers crossovers. And that's, that. I think that's what we need. I don't think we need a massive Avengers movie. I think we need the factions. And it's funny because Kevin Feige even confirmed right now, he said that he's he's as excited as he was when, he, when the first Iron Man movie came out. And that was after the Eternals released. So... After the Eternals released, he says he's at a point right now with MCU where he's as excited as he was for when I, for Iron Man 1 came out. Damn. That guy knows how to sell. Mm -hmm. wow. So, Sony plays ball with Disney. Yeah. And we get Spider-Man. 
you think Universal plays ball with Dracula and Universal makes a Dracula movie with the same guy? I think they could. I don't know if they would, though, because, again, I don't know if you want to involve Dracula from that, yeah, that's that true. monster world. You know what I mean? It's kind of... I like that's the thing. Like, yes, we know we know there's the the horror film Dracula, but we know we also know there's a Marvel Dracula. And though though they they share similar stories, that doesn't necessarily mean they're you know the same guy. Same and guy. Dracula is in the public domain, so yeah. they might not need to worry about that. Okay, exactly. I like this. I like where this is going. All right, all right. What's my number eight? Okay, my number eight. I think this is where we're gonna have our first crossover. And if not, I'd be very shocked. Galactus. Nope. Wow! <laughs> the oh, the okay. reason being is I think Galactus is already coming. Oh my good! I hope I didn't just blow up my mic. Are we still good? Am I recording fine? I hope so. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, good. <laughs> Galactus is not on your list. Well, he's on mine, even though it's more than likely we will get him. I still put him on there because there's always a chance we don't. That's true. We again, we waited from 2008 until 2021. Mm -hmm. That's 13 years of from the moment of we're definitely getting Mandarin to we finally got Mandarin. Mm -hmm. It's a 13 year gap. So sure. when Fantastic Four comes out in whenever year, I think it's I think it's slated for 2023. It's one of the, I think it's one of the untitles slated for 2023. All right, we'll see what happens there. But let's say it comes out in 2023. And then imagine waiting still 13 years before you see Galactus from that point. So 2035 is when Galactus shows up. I don't know if I want to think that. Part. That's yeah, exactly. <laughs> so as far as I'm concerned, yeah. he's not in the MCU. So I want to see him. Uh, God only knows how they're going to do him, who's going to play him. I don't know, but I just want him to be big. I heard um, something about one of the... Celestials in Eternals is supposed to be like a hundred or six hundred kilometers tall. So they're already experimenting with big people. Uh, so bring on, bring on Galactus, make him pink, give him the thing, give him the helmet. Mm -hmm. we, the helmet's a signature. He's got to have in the square eyes. Oh, I guess. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, that's an interesting choice, man. Your your head's in the in the stars for sure. Um, and he's only my number eight. He's only your number eight. Well, on that happy note, that does allow me to kind of play in that field a little bit. Mm -hmm. So in the last number, I was talking about how um, there are some unconfirmed Marvel projects that are, whether or not we're not sure if they're a part of the canon of MCU. Mm -hmm. So the gray area is in Cloak and Dagger and the Runaways, which on that argument, yes, apparently, yes, they are MCU. That being said, this is why it's gray area because it's confirmed in that Marvel Studios book now. Agents of Shield is not canon mm -hmm. of the MCU, so they're being very picky about who the who's a part of the MCU. Because and I, I as someone who, if I were cast in Agents of Shield, I feel a little sad about that. I would, but as someone who's Kevin Feige, that like you want to be careful because the world is building very quickly, but people are still as committed, um, if not more about like where this world is going. So you do have to be careful of who you're adding into the mix while you're building. Yeah. So that, so, okay. So for me, the next villain I'm going to play off of with Galactus is, uh, the wizard. Oh, nice. Who also has a pink helmet. And who else has pick helmet? Um, but the wizard is a great Fantastic Four villain, and I think I think honestly is probably the best starting Fantastic Four villain that you might want to play with, mm -hmm. because the reason is with the wizard is Marvel storytelling is very uh, satire. It's very satire or satirical. Can you say it's satirical? Yeah, it's satir satir Yeah, that word. Uh, <laughs> sat satirical. So that's the Marvel writing formula. Stanley said it, he even confirmed it. Like when we do Marvel, we like it to feel like a satire because that's, that creates connection. Um, and so I chose him because we live in a very technology driven world now, especially in the, you know, through these times that we're in and you could do the wizard as like a super evil Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a great starting fantastic four villain. Yeah. Um, although, with Fantastic Four, you could 
I probably would want them to go to space as quickly as possible as possible, but I think starting them with technology and kind of surrounding them, like showing off the flexing the science a little bit, I think that would be kind of fun and then send them into space. Flexing the science. That that's gonna be in the movie, that phrase. The flexing the science it has to be, right? Like, but like here's the thing, like I think with WandaVision, they tease that they're looking for astronauts in their new space, the space program. And in the comics, Reed does steal the rocket ship to go into space. And he convinces Ben to be the pilot and the, and the rest writes itself. So I think with this story, what would be fun is if the, if the wizard either was part of building the rocket and he was excited to lead the mission and be all, get all that notoriety and everything, but Fantastic Four steal the rocket and, you know, because it's perfect. We're in a space race technically right now with corporations. So why not kind of have that, that tension? Yeah. And it, it adds something to Reed Richards that I thought they should play up more because it's fun. Mm-hmm. Is that he's kind of an asshole. Oh, yeah. He's, he's such a dick. So you can have that little thing where it's like, you know what? Half the audience is sitting there thinking... Go wizard! Like, yeah. <laughs> that, that guy back. That's exactly what I mean, right? Like, if you play him as kind of like an Elon Musk character, you might you might root for him a little bit, mm. and that's perfect. It kind of it kind of creates exactly that tension that you want in the MCU right now. And like I said, it fits with the kind of the world we're in today, where like you have all these big corporations going into space now, mm-hmm. but Reed steals the rocket and then ends up creating an event that brings all the attention to him and makes Wizard feel second rate, and then thus kicks off. Kicks off a small, a, a, a big but small enough villain like Iron Man One to kind of kickstart the Fantastic Four. Beautiful. I'm on board. I'm on board with this. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, uh, breaking news: Mark Zuckerberg cast as the Wizard. Whoa! Uh, can you imagine that? He's like, "Rude, I don't like you." That's my Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me your information so yeah. that I can sell it. It's. It's my very weird impression, but yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I get how you're doing. I get the why you're doing it that way. Yeah, it's weird. I know it's kind of weird. I know. Talk. Wizard, good pick. Mm. Good pick. All right, I'm on number seven. I'm really excited about number seven. I hope I get. I, I hope we still get. I, I'm counting on three matches here. I know. I don't know Come if on. we're gonna hit that mark here. Come on, hit me. Okay, number seven really excites me, and I have a feeling when I say the name, it's not gonna excite you, but. I look at it this way. They're so good at thinking outside the box and they have so many different avenues of doing that. My mind for this particular guy goes to Disney Plus, a Disney Plus show, uh, because they can play with the fact that it's a TV show and they can play with kind of what they did with WandaVision where it was almost breaking the fourth wall. Mm -hmm. They can take that and amp it up to 11 and beyond. I wanna see them do Mojo. Oh, that's a good one. I debated. I debated Mojo, but I did not put him in my list. Mm, but, imagine, but a good X-Men villain to choose, for sure. And like, I'm just picking the little things they could do. Like, the day the episode comes out of whatever the show is, imagine every widget on your Disney Plus home screen is just Mojo shows. Because like, mm-hmm. that's that's his whole thing, right? <laughs> so it would be like, oh, you want to watch that? Well, you're going to get me. Ah, Mojo, man. Um, like, oh, you're, wherever you go, you navigate to whatever. You're trying to watch High School Musical 3? Oh, now it's High School Mojical 3. <laughs> uh, it's like, so true. You can market them so many ways. They could have so much fun with Mojo. And then everybody will be talking about this character. Yeah. And... You know, at this point, nobody really is. So that's a, I think that's a golden opportunity to take someone not well known Mm -hmm. and suddenly make him a meme because he's so well known that just his image is shorthand because he's that popular at that point. That's, I can see that happening already and I'm ready for it. Just give it to me. Mojo is a solid choice. Okay, so you're already diving into the X-Men villains. Uh, I did with Shi'ar, though, to be fair. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Mojo is a solid choice. I, but again, I, this is what I'm talking about when you're pitching a villain in the MCU. It has to affect the MCU in a big way. And Mojo is a great character that can dive and dabble into all sorts of topics. And, and you can really do... Not only can you do Mojo Vision, that kind of story run we've seen from the cartoon with the X-Men, but you could play around by throwing in just any character you want right I, completely mm-hmm. oh, i do have i do have x-men villains 
but I'm not there on my list yet. I'm, I'm not ready yet. Uh, the next character, so this is, I, I talked about it before, but I didn't actually land the plane here, is I said that we have some unconfirmed areas of MCU characters. And so my next villain is Medusa. And the reason why I introduced Miss Duso with the beautiful hair is it's fun because you could do kind of this supermodel-like character and you could play up those kind of fun angles. But with the wizard Medusa, you can do the Frightful Four. Mm -hmm. And you can also introduce, uh, or sorry, you can have Sandman, who we're probably going to see. And thus, you can have kind of a villain group that would be fun, kind of fun to have. It's about time we got a villain group already. I, right? We're masters of evil. Like, we've had so many opportunities to get some really cool stuff in there. So, um, yeah, I want, I want, want, want uh, the Frightful Four and Medusa. But... I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I want to get to my X-Men villain, so I'm going to move on from there. Anyway, go ahead. Now, are you hoping to go the Medusa route where she was hypnotized to being the Frightful Four, and then it's like, oh, yeah, she's really a nice person, and she's one of the... Oh, yeah. for Yeah, so uh, through Medusa, I want that to happen because then I want Black Bolt to go looking for her and keep the same actors. Like, I, I don't think they were that bad. I think what, the only thing that suffered was the... Uh, the production mm. of like their costumes, the looks and all that stuff. Like I think full well, they could easily still use all the same actors. I love the actor who they picked for, uh, I think his name's Korvac, um, who has the ability to, uh, um, or no, sorry, Karnak, right. where, where he has the ability to find a weakness in the wall. I love the actor who they cast for that. I think he was perfect. He's the villain of, of the, what are they no, called? No, Maximus, the Maximus is the, is Maximus, the villain. that's right. Uh, and is the guy played from Game of Thrones who's so perfect for the role. Yes. Um, and it's the Inhumans. The Inhumans, thank yes. you. And we're already getting Inhumans reintroduced uh, in the MCU with uh, Miss Marvel. Really? Yeah, she's an Inhuman. Oh, cool. All right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm learning so much about this girl. I just wanted to show it come out so I can see the deal. They pushed it back pretty far. <laughs> I know. I know. All right. So that was your seven? Yep. Okay, here we go. There's got to be some crossover soon. So my number six is Dr. Doom. Still I, I know because I know he's coming. He's we coming. Know I, I know the fans want like what other possible options, but we know Doom's coming. We know it. I don't Unless know. it's Doom 299. It could, be. it could be, or it could be like Lady Doom or something. We don't know. I'm, I'm going classic Victor Von Doom, mask, maybe cape. Yeah. I won't hate on the cape. Castle, that's a big deal for me. Give him a castle now, finally. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I mean, what's there to say about Doom? I, uh, I don't know if you've seen the Netflix show, which might be my new favorite Netflix show of all time, Midnight Mass. No. It's a horror show. Uh, the main guy in it, is played by an actor named Hamish Linkletter. He's Victor Von Doom. Man. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find a picture for you. There, there was a, a massive rumor uh, that uh, Sicilian Murphy is is in talks to be Dr. Doom. Really? That I did see surface, which is what I predicted. If it happens, we did a list of characters, uh, actors who should play certain MCU characters, and I chose Sicilian Murphy. Oh, yeah, he looks mm -hmm. like Von Doom. And he, he plays a priest in this, and I'm like, like that's, he's got Doom written all over him. Oh, it. yeah. He's yeah. got that Doom look on his face. Yeah. That's it. But that's to that's be fair, happening. like, again, to be fair, you can really pick, as long as you pick an actor who's, like, really good, it doesn't really matter, because he wears the mask 90% of the time, yeah. and the other 10%, his face is burned. So it really doesn't matter what the actor looks like. Is it, 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 We want the emotional delivery. I want, I want to feel the feels with the Doom. I want the pining of the invisible woman. Mm -hmm. I want the I want the underappreciated Doctor Doom. That's what I want. Yeah, I want it. I just want a castle. Yeah. If it's you know, I, Dracula might have a castle. That's fine. But if Doom doesn't have a castle, yeah, I'm never watching an MCU. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, take it away. What's Ooh. your seven? No, your six. What's your six? Six. All right. I just. Bit, 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 bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, I want to dabble in those X-Men villains, but I don't I don't want to do it just yet. Uh, I'm going to pick the Beyonder. Oh, the guy who gets everybody together for Secret War. That's right. Now, you could do a tag team here. You could introduce the Beyonder and Molecule Man, um, who play very significant roles in Secret Wars. 
Um, but beyond her, I, I think you could easily do Disney Plus runs. You could do you do an entire movie. But my point is, is actually I kind of prefer Disney Plus runs because one season you can have a roster of heroes that most likely will not be teamed up together in any big project. Put them in that put them in that show. Have them do a secret war with again a whole different wide variety of villains. And every season you can just mix it up, mix and match. Why not? Ooh. Because it's fun. And Beyonder's a fun character to do. And so I think that uh, I think that would be kind of a because Beyonder is always going for like the it's not like the question of what if, it's like it's the question of what is good and what is bad. Right. And I and I would love, 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 love to see se- different seasons of and it doesn't have to be like a massive roster. If you go back to Spider-Man cartoon, he had the Fantastic Four, he had Storm, he had Iron Man, he had um I think that was it. No, Captain America, and yes. uh, and then lizard. and then eventually got Lizard and Cow or a Black Cat Catwoman. <laughs> uh, anyway, so my my point is is like have a roster of four heroes versus four villains, and then everyone do do a different one every single time. I like this, man. I never thought about a show mm-hmm. where it's a different big crossover. It's like a, a mini Secret War yeah. every single time. Oh boy, well, wasn't there actually? The Marvel team up. That's what it yeah. is called. Yeah. It would be something like that. I, yeah, yeah. I'm down. 100%. I'm down. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's exciting. All right. Beyonder. I like it. Uh, I like it. Right. Um, well, I hope you don't mind, but I have to stay, uh, hop back on my X Men train. Okay. My, I, I'm ready for the X Men train. I'm ready, ready for the X Men train. More, probably bored in the next one. My number five. And I, I know this is where we're going to have our first crossover. This is it. It's happening. Yeah, I see. My number five. Is Mr. Sinister. Yes! 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 Crossover! Dr. Nathaniel Essex, man. <laughs> Otherwise known as Sinister. Mr. Sinister. If Honestly, if for no other reason than just I love, I love what MCU has done with their costume work. Mm-hmm. And I just want to see them bring that purple and red number to life, baby. Just give me the, the purple tentacle cape, whatever the hell that was you were wearing, Nathaniel. I'm not going to judge you, but man, that was an odd choice. And mixed with the the pale skin and like the flat haircut, I just want to see that. I want to see how that looks when they do it. And there, which X Men movie was it where they teased SX Industries and then nothing came of it? Oh Remember? man, it was no like idea. the post credit scene. I think it was like Days of Future Past. Or it was something movies. like that, yeah. And we never got it. So I I had to. I also agree. We had to have. We have to have Mister Sinister. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you why because. You could do this a couple ways, but I would start it in, I would start it on, if I'm going to introduce the X-Men, I'm going to start it on the wedding of Cyclops and Jean. Oh. Then you have Mr. Sinister come in, steal Jean, get Cyclops, and then he's like playing around with genetics and, and he talks about, he talks about evolution and you kick off just like you did with the X-Men movies before, but you, you you kind of corrupt it a little bit. And this is why I say this, because you could start with um, the beautiful story that they did in the X-Men cartoon, where where they talk about how Charles Xavier's great-grandfather was uh, with Dr. Nathaniel Essex, and they talk about evolution with Charles Darwin. And I would love to see that, because then it creates the backstory that you need to kind of involve mutants into the whole story. And that was all Victorian London too. That was beautiful. Oh yeah. And and again, you could play around with it a little bit and you can have fun. Um uh but yeah I think that I think it's so key. I think Sinister is the key to unlocking mutants in the MCU. I personally think he holds that for sure. I think you're right, man, because he his whole deal is all about genetics. Like he's obsessed with it and yeah. learning how it works. And he's one of those mutants where I can't remember exactly what his powers are. Regeneration is pretty much the way, it, like, it, like if you shoot him, aside from getting hit, like if he gets hit by Cyclops, that's when he starts to to melt a little bit. Uh-huh. But if you scratch him, you cut his arm off, he regenerates completely. Like quickly? Yeah, like oh, instantly. Shit. Oh, shit. Okay, so he's like, he's Wolverine on speed, yeah. essentially. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's dangerous. So that's a great... Uh, we have we've seen characters with healing now. We've seen Wolverine a bunch, um, but to see a villain really use that 
to a scary effect mm -hmm. hasn't been done yet. So yeah, I think, and again, like you could push this as far as you want to go. Like I honestly, you could do so much with Sinister, and and you could again, you could even kick off a new Days of Future Past. You can do all sorts of things. Um, so yeah, so that was number five. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that will be my number five. So back to you. Okay. Uh, oh, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Okay. Number four, I know is not on your list. And I understand why it's I'd not be, on your list. I'd be wholeheartedly surprised. But um, this is just somebody who's near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. And it's high time we see him in a movie. Mm -hmm. And it, it also goes back to the costume thing where I just love his costume and I want to see Marvel do his costume right now. Oh, but that is my friend, the Hobgoblin. Oh, come on. I you love suck. Hobgoblin. He is ten times cooler than Green Goblin. I don't care what anybody says. Green Goblin's fine, but he ain't no Hob. Okay? I don't see Green Goblin rocking a matching orange what are you doing? What are you? Hobgoblin is the man. He's so scary. I love the whole idea of you don't know who's behind that mask. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't really done the whole mystery whodunit kind of aspect of like, who is this I mean, they almost did it with Taskmaster, but it's not like we knew Dracob's daughter throughout the movie, so it wasn't like a, oh, it was her all along. She like you know, it, it's it didn't have that um, uh, Jason Mackendale thing where it's like this guy who we've been seeing hanging out with Felicia for a full season and a half. He's the Hobgoblin. Damn, that's scary. So I want that. I want it to be this moment of like, oh my God, Agent Coulson. You know, like somebody we've trusted is under that mask, um, and if they make it. Ned, I'm all for it, because I think that would be awesome. And I've, I've spoken before about my thoughts on Hobgoblin being the secret main true villain of No Way Home. And I'm still no, I, no Way Home is way too epic at this point to, oh, to dial it down oh, to no. Hobgoblin. Unless he's played by Mark Hamill. Ooh, wow, that would be something. Yeah. But uh, I, want, I want to see my Hobgoblin in the MCU. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, ugh, I, I don't know. Personally, I don't think, I think we're way past that kind of villain. It's just too small time. Too small time for Spider-Man who's like, well, it's, he's, he's so far into his story now that like, we need to go big. We need to go, like, I would go, I, by the lowest I would go is Craven at this point. And Craven's a pretty big story. It's like, a pretty big story. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, but like now, like we need to, we need to go Kingpin. Like we need to really amp up Spider-Man a little bit more. Um, okay, so I will introduce uh, my fourth. Uh, it is an X-Men villain, and I'm surprised you did not use this one yet. Um, I think he has a lot of potential, and he's going to be really unique. Um, and he kind of plays into uh, the rich kids kind of thing, the rich kid kind of story. And, the, and I think he could really play off of, like, influencers today and, like, and and uh, be a big social media mongol kind of thing. And that villain I'm talking about is Arcade. I think Arcade would be the Joker of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in the, in the way that um, he captures heroes in the weirdest, most bizarre way. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite X-Men comics with him is like, Spider-Man's running around New York calling people being like, hey, what's up? Are you guys okay? You know, Arcade's on the loose kind of thing. And all of a sudden, um, I think it's Cyclops is walking on the streets and the garbage truck just like picks him up and just throws oh. him in. But, uh, but Arcade just has these crazy, you could do all these crazy levels with him and like, you know, taking out, trying to, ch a danger room kind of style experience. And so you could have him capture Avengers. You can have, just have him, again, I'm all about this kind of mini Secret Wars thing where you can have him capture different heroes and just try to kill them. And he's, He's just crazy for the sake of crazy, but essentially his story is he had a really rich, he had really rich parents, and he got so bored that he just decided to kill him. And and yeah, let the storytelling begin. And I think that Arcade would be an incredible MCU character. Is he the one from Ultimate Alliance where he, it was the big fun house? Yeah. That's okay, yeah. Um well, he was scary. And Oh, you don't even know the half of it. <laughs> <laughs> he I, I think he's a great fit, man, because he is, again, he's one of those characters like Mojo, where he's nobody really talks about him, but Marvel is so good at taking those characters, and all of a sudden everybody's talking about them because yeah. of the way they present them to the world. So I think that's 
that's a sure thing that's coming. I think you're right. You did say you did say in the last video too that I would surprise you with villains. Yeah. And I feel like I really dug deep for that one. You did. Yeah, I like that a lot. Arcade. Um, all right. I'm on three. So this is exciting now. This is number three. We're staying in the X-Men universe. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we got to talk about my favorite X-Men villain. He needs to show up. He's the juggernaut, bitch. Oh, the he juggernaut. Needs to show up. And I know, um, you know, we've you know, I'm going to give you props on that one. I, I'm going to stop you right there and just say, I'm going to give you props on that one. Because you saw the X-Men version, and we were all just like, oof. Ugh. And I feel bad because they chose a really good actor that could, they could have really done some cool stuff with. Um, and he wouldn't really fit the relationship with the brother thing. Uh, but, uh, but because we have seen the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. Yes. Uh, so we have seen Sidorak introduced in the MCU. So why not bring in the Juggernaut? Exactly. Sidorak's in. And they did such a better job in Deadpool 2 with Juggernaut. And I know Deadpool is now integrating. So we'll see what that process is like. But... We're almost there, but we're still not where I want it to be. We have Juggernaut now who looks like the Juggernaut should look. Yeah. But give me the the dark red helmet. Give me the red things on his hands. The bracers. The, yeah. yeah, the bracers. The red and brown thing he's wearing. Make him bust through some walls with his heads. He's my all-time favorite X-Men villain, and I want to see... Again, the costume is important for me because I love what they do with the costumes. Mm -hmm. I just want to see them bring him to life in the most colorful MCU way that I know they can do. I want, you know, movie theater cops to have his face on it. I want Juggernaut to be a big deal because he is literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like it. I really like that. that is job right. well done, sir. Job well done. Nothing can stop the Juggernaut. Nothing can stop. So this is, we're in the top threes now. So yes. we're not joking around. This is where it's going to get serious. I chose a double header on this one, it, and it has to be because you can't do one without the other. Mary Kate Nashville. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I chose Henry Peter Gyrick <gasps> and Dr. Trask. Oh my God, I love this. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and so the reason why I chose them is because you can really kick off the Civil War that we're dying to see because it can start on the mutant side by introducing the Sentinels. And Henry Peter Gyrig does not like superheroes, period. So, and because he works so close with the government, I think you could really do the highest scale Civil War that you've ever wanted and do Civil War II and just go nuts with X-Men, Fantastic Four, uh, you know, Avengers and bring back Tom Holland, Spider-Man just for kicks uh, and go absolutely bonkers. Like just go nuts. Wow. Heck, throw in the Punisher and let him kill a few people. Oh, wow. This is great. Yeah. Oh, uh, who, who's going to play Gyrick? I don't know. I really don't know. But but that's the thing. I think Gyrick is such an interesting character because of his involvement with the government. Mm -hmm. And, like, I want to see him. And, I like, even, like, as you look at the first few episodes of X-Men, you could easily make that kind of traction with the X-Men break, and again, another great way to introduce the X-Men is have them break into a government facility, make them kind of this cloak and dagger stealth ops team, uh, and then have the Avengers start having political differences about like, should the, should these mutants be, you know, registrants and all this stuff and talk about the Sentinel program and you could go to uh, Genosha, like this opens all the doors and that's why Master Mold, Nimrod, Master, yeah, Master Mold, Nimrod, Days of Future Past all over again. Like you could do, and you could do Days of Future Past and still use the original X-Men movies as part of that narrative. Like you go absolutely bonkers with all this stuff with, with, which is why they had to be top three and I had to do both because you can't have one without the other yeah they're like um, they're like S Smythe and Herbert Landon like they yeah the, you can't you cannot do one, other, one without the other and I would even argue like bring back Peter Dinklage as Trask like he was a great Trask he was a great Trask he, I, I honestly honestly terrible design for the Sentinels and, but like, he was an incredible trash. He was scary. He was, but yet he was like, 
you you felt for what he was trying to do. And again, Peter Dinklage is an amazing actor. He's mm. an incredibly he's an incredibly meticulous actor in all the little details and everything. So I I would want him back as Trask for sure. Yeah, I like that. And wasn't was it Dyrick who because he was assassinated, it started the events that lead to Days of Future Past. Yes. Yeah. It's him, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This this is yeah, for sure. 100 percent I gotta go. I am take my money. Yeah. Take, <laughs> take my child's money. That's it. All right. Number two. This is getting tense now. Number two. All right. I'm sticking with the same rough size of my number three. We you chose Apocalypse. You're going even bigger. No, I actually don't care for Apocalypse. Yeah, I don't care for him. Uh, my least favorite X-Men villain. Um, Age of Apocalypse is a great story. Yeah, yeah great story. Great story. Uh, but this is <laughs> savage. This is a villain who um, I think it's time to give him his due in a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I'm once more, I'm thinking visually, and I'm thinking of how beautiful Marvel movies look and how beautiful it would look to see this guy on screen next to his hero rival. And that is the Red Hulk. Mm. Ooh, yeah, okay. It's time. It's time. Yeah. Red skin, black trousers, fighting off against green skin and purple trousers. Looks beautiful. It's got the Spider-Man Venom quality of just, they just look gorgeous together. You want to paint that on the Sistine Chapel and just stare up at it with the Pope. It is the, in my opinion, most iconic looking and definitive Hulk villain. Because you take Ross, who is arguably the Hulk villain of villains, and you put him on an, a level playing field. It's like giving J. Jonah Jameson a symbiote. Like, the, the things you could do with him are legion. And I don't understand why more people aren't riding that train of like, oh my god, I get to see two Hulks smash each other? Yes! Like, we, th this needs to be something people are clamoring for. Mm -hmm. uh, so give it to me. Give me Red Hulk. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, 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 here's the thing with me and the Hulk. I, I, for me, I like the hero sides of the Hulk. Like, I like the Hulk as a character. The Hulk as a character alone, you don't even need villains because the struggle that Banner has to go through to be like being, being the Hulk. And they, they did such a great job in the Avenger, the first Avengers movie. Like, you, if it's one thing you had to say about Whedon's Avengers is that he delivered the Hulk people wanted. Oh yeah, like, and and it's a shame too because I know I know, and if you ask our our uh, our third co-host from time to time, Anna, she would tell you like Norton's Hulk was on the right track. They they kind of Disneyfied him a little bit. They didn't let him go as far as he wanted to go. But that being said, I think we didn't found a way to kind of meet in the middle and yet still give the Hulk people wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, and, and the Red Hulk story, I like it. I don't know if it's enough. I personally, for me, I as a fan, like I would prefer a leader or like, you know, other Hulk villains, uh, Absorbing Man, like stuff like that. Yeah. But like the, the trick is with villains like Red Hulk, it just – it. It's kind of like Iron Man 2. They're too similar, and it kind of, I don't know, it's too similar to a point where it's like, eh, you know, like, give, give me something more. Yeah, they are similar. You're right. It would have to be... Like, it's, a cl it's almost too close to Abomination, is, I think that's my problem. Right. It would have to be some, they'd have to find some different way to do it. They need to change the Red Hulk story, I think, because you're yeah. right, the story is not the greatest. But the idea of... Somebody as intelligent as Ross having the Hulk strength and keeping the intelligence but using it for bad is horrifying. Yes, this is this is also true. And we've seen what I love about the way MCU has done Hulk is every time we see Hulk, we see a different kind of Hulk. We yeah. see the rage monster, we see you know Banner having trouble performing. <laughs> we see uh, <laughs> Um, like Smart Hulk, uh, and like really the only ones we haven't seen yet are Red Hulk and like Joe Fix It. Uh, so you could theoretically have that both happen in one movie where Red Hulk uh, pulls an Earth's Mightiest Heroes thing and, and joins the Avengers under the guise of being a, a good person, and he's not. 
And that would really, uh, I, I, I want it. I just, I just want that red good. And then seeing those two Hulks smash each other mm -hmm. like that. If you think Hulk versus the, the Veronica Buster was a big deal, this will make that look like a walk in the park. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. All right. Red Hulk, number three for you. Here's my two. Oh, there's number two. Yes, yeah, sorry. Number two for you. For my number two, I'm going with Tony Masters, a.k.a. the real Taskmaster. Let me throw some shade. Throw some shade at Olga Kurilenko. I love you, Olga. I'm sorry my co-host doesn't love you. I think you did great. I really do. I think that in the comics, there has been, it was, it was another, uh, it was a, I think it was a Russian male uh, of the same name almost, mm -hmm. but there was a Russian character who played Taskmaster. Okay. And I think personally that uh, what's going to happen is, is that the way I would do it is the Taskmaster comes out again, same outfit, the exact same look. This one's more chatty. Mm. way more like drive up the the Deadpool kind of level of chat like yeah. drive it up and literally um, have him like appear in multiple uh, Marvel uh, Marvel projects as like a mini boss um, and he's like and you see him do like the copy thing like literally attack different Marvel heroes just like Taskmaster did with the first Widow encounter where she's just like making a left turn and just boom, like, and you're on your feet right away. Um, and so the way I would pitch it to kind of reintroduce the character is, is again, have that kind of the first attack and like uh, either on, uh, on uh, Yelena or like, or someone who's affiliate, it's someone who kind of shield, for example, like someone who kind of knows um, the character a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then have him like don the Taskmaster outfit and be like, oh, you know, I sold him that. Like, that was me. I sold him that. Like, he can even narrate it a little bit. Like, look, I sold that project and they failed. That means, you know, when in doubt, you know, or, you know, when you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. Like, bring that character back and let's see multiple appearances. Don't kill off that villain. Because, again, makes a great mini boss to a bigger boss. So, you know, whether or not, like Norman Osborn, if Norman Osborn's a, vil uh, or a villain in the MCU now, have him assemble like the Dark Avengers and like, and use Taskmaster as, as an agent of the, the Dark Avengers. Yeah, I like this. I like where this is going. If, you know, um, did you see the new Watchmen show, the HBO Watchmen? Yes. So you've seen it all, right? I can spoil stuff? Yeah, go for it. Okay. I'm thinking of that episode where the main character, she's she's uh, assessing some crime scene or something. Mm -hmm. And then that dude just shows up in the silver spandex and like fights her for a bit and then he runs away. Yeah. That's what I'm picturing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly like that. But that's what I'm saying. And like you can make, you can introduce him as shield agent. Introduce him however you want. Like you can introduce him like kind of like a Hawkeye. Like, but my point is, is like, I think the fun, I think what they proved with Taskmaster in Widow is that people want more Taskmaster. Can um, Dracon's daughter still be involved? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think you need to retcon her or anything. Like, literally, you just need to sell it as, like, that was... Because like, Taskmaster sells his program. He mm -hmm. sells his program to the highest bidder. So you can literally acknowledge that, yes, that was her journey. And better yet, you can still have her as a Taskmaster henchman. Ooh, okay. Like, play it. Like, honestly, like, there's... You don't need to fix the character. The, I think the biggest problem people have is they're expecting Tony Masters. They were yeah. expecting it, and they didn't get it. And that does, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that the the program failed. And and here's the other thing that's interesting. I watched, I was watching the fight scenes again, as I do with action movies of of that caliber. Um, and I saw if you look at the troops in the, the near the end of the movie, they all start looking like Taskmaster. They have like skull helmets oh. and they but they wear like all black. But uh, when the dude when the dude introduces his daughter, uh, he says it's a prototype. So clearly you can you could easily patch that that road bump right there and just ah, it wouldn't even feel like a retcon. It wouldn't. It would just feel like it would just feel like a reintroduction of the character and like. 
go crazy. Just go nuts. But yeah, give me give me the Taskmaster that all the Marvel fans want. Okay. I speak for all the Marvel fans. All Marvel fans. I still love you, Olga. You can call me up I love she, you want. Look, she's amazing, and I love her in it. And But like, here's my thing. I know that... Here's, here's my thing about it. Is they built the suit for her, and yet I have to say, and I don't want to get into any like dark area here. I mean all wellness here. But it, it was a very male-looking suit, and even the stunt performer was a man. Mm -hmm. So... You know, you could argue that this is a, uh, you could argue many different ways to look at it. But my point is, is it's a prototype. I'm sticking strictly comic book lore here, people. It was a prototype and it looked like it was a suit designed for somebody else. Okay. And that's all I'm going to say. I mean, I, if anyone gets offended, I deeply apologize. But just, just hear me out from a comic book perspective here of someone who wants the Tony Masters. The, wow. the really chatty you know, comic book villain that we want. What does he look like? Tony? Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we've ever seen his face. Ooh. Maybe he just is a skull. Maybe. That would be, that would be neat. Maybe we've seen it. I don't know. I haven't read enough, uh, I haven't read enough Taskmaster. Although I want to get into it. Apparently he had a, a, a new run in the, uh, he had a new run in the Marvel comics and it was so good. Mm. Like apparently it was like a good retelling. Uh, but my understanding is I don't think we've ever seen his face. That's cool. Yeah. I think that would be a fun move for them to do where you don't, whether or not they cast somebody, you know, to be Tony in the suit, whatever, mm. you never see the face at all. It's always under that yeah. helmet. I would like that. All right, so we're both on our last ones. Yes, we are. I well, guarantee you, you're not going to be able to guess which one I know. Who I, I, I don't think I will. Uh, if I had to take a wild guess, I'd say you're picking like one of the Heralds of Galactus or something. <laughs> um, no Terax for me. No, no thank you. Uh, I don't even need to look at my phone because I know what my number one is. Who? You know what my number one is. They know what my number one is. I want it. I think I know who your number one is, and I don't want to guess wrong. Is it Magneto? No, it's Magneto. No. It's again. You could argue we already got them in the MCU, but I'm arguing we didn't. Is it Modok? I swear to God, it better not be Modok. It's the Kingpin, man. Uh, of, course. of course, this is a Kingpin. Of course, I'm a little embarrassed. I should have known that because yes, you are a big fan of the Kingpin. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. bring back no Nofrio. Hashtag bring back Nofrio. <laughs> Can we make that a campaign, Marvel fans? Yeah. Hashtag bring back Nofrio. We don't know if he's in this Hawkeye thing. A lot of people are leaning towards that he is, but if he is it, hashtag bring back Nofrio. We need to know. How about this? Hashtag long live the king. Oh man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hashtag long live the king. If, I, I cannot say it enough times, Kevin, if you're watching, if any of you are watching, Kathleen, I don't care, Iger, who, the guy who plays Donald Duck, if any of you are watching, if a movie comes out, any movie, and I see white suit Wilson Fisk in the same shot. Purple Ascot. Purple Ascot. In the same shot as red and blue suit Spider-Man, I'll give you a million dollars. I don't know how I'll get it. I can't promise I'll get it legally. Installments over many years. Over many years, but I will give you, I will pay you a million dollars for the ticket to that movie. My admission will have six zeros. Six zeros? Yes. My math is rusty. Long live the king. Long live the king. Here's the deal, man. When D'Onofrio came in, that man brought a level of presence, professionalism. He did what Patrick Stewart did for Star Trek. That's what he did to Daredevil. Yeah. Like, he came in just with such presence and yet created so many, like, interesting dynamics to the character. Just a joy to watch. Every scene. Every scene, I have never seen, I don't, or sorry, I, I can't say I've never seen it, but I rarely see uh, uh, 
an experience like Daredevil where you want the hero as much as you want the villain. Oh, I every in the first and third seasons of Daredevil when it was ending, I can't tell you how much fear I was feeling of like, please don't kill him, please don't kill Fisk, please don't kill Fisk. Uh, and I was just like, because I, I don't want to stop seeing him. I, I can't not have him. And every time I was sighing with relief, like, oh God, he didn't kill him. You know, and the, the normal audience is like, yeah, Daredevil didn't kill because he's a good guy. And I'm like, yay, Fisk is still alive. Uh, that's, I mean, that's all. That's all I need to say. He cl like you, you. You said it beautifully. He he brought a, a gravitas that you know. That's the card. Beautiful word. He is. Uh, he classed up the joint. Keep on classing it. Bring him on the big screen. He's the not real. He's yeah. he belongs on the big screen. I just love the the barometer of intensity that guy has. Every every episode, every scene he's in, you just think he's just gonna like just explode and just like go nuts. My one of my favorite scenes is is when the Russian comes in during the restaurant and he goes, we'll take you for a ride. Like he's always in control. Like he's like, we'll take you like, let's take him in the car and we'll talk to him, talk to Wesley and all that stuff. And then later on, he just gets in the car with him. He just tacks him and just put the door. Uh, oh, you embarrassed me in front of her. <laughs> my favorite, also my favorite scene too, that I love that they did was that he recruited Punisher to do his dirty work. Mm. I love those scenes. Like give us, yes, give us more. Long live the King. Hashtag long live the King. Hashtag bring back the opera. I mean, love you, D'Onofrio. Hope one day you watch this. I love you. I love your work. Your CSI, or was the Law and Order? Can't remember. But I love your work. You anyway. know how he was the villain in Into the Spider Verse, where he was trying to find a universe where his family was still alive. Yeah, and one of them was Matt Murdock. <laughs> what if that's carried into No Way Home, and he's still trying to find a universe, and that's why all this shit happens? Oh. But we get D'Onofrio. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. that's a hard one to beat. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh man, oh god, that's a hard one to beat. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, I don't even know how to introduce this character. I mean, yeah. So we only have one crossover. Yeah, I think you won. I, well, I got closest, I said two. Yeah. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> Unless this one's a crossover too, no, but I don't think it is. I doubt. I doubt it. This one. This was. This was an interesting going for me. So. <laughs> so, uh, whew, man, that's a tough one to beat because D'Onofrio is such a complete. He created such a complete villain. Mm -hmm. You just want him. You just want him to be the Doctor Doom of the MCU in the sense of like you want him to always get away, always win in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. Um. So my villain I chose was like, I wanted to look at the big broad spectrum of the MCU. And I wanted a villain that would stand up to Red Skull. Because here's the thing, I loved Hugo Weaving's Red Skull. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about another great actor with another great villain. And it's shame because I wanted to see that character get way more use. Because it's such a big character. I would love to see him infiltrate the U.S. government. I would have loved to have seen him, you know, go after all sorts of crazy relics. Uh, I'd love to see him create Electro, like, all this stuff. Um, you know, give me the Secret Warriors. The list goes on. So I was like, what can be a character that can carry on the legacy of the Red Skull? And, and also yet give us some stories that we really badly want. Uh, that that played out in cartoons and all this stuff. So I went with a character called Cynthia. I don't know who this is. Oh, well, you're in for a treat, my friend. Mm -hmm. Cynthia has uh, has uh, quite the interesting legacy in this this comic book series uh, in Marvel. I didn't know about her until I did a lot of research on Captain America. I went through a big Captain America stint. I've seen all sorts of uh, Captain America comics. Uh, Dimension Z is definitely worth checking out. Mm -hmm. um, so this character, her name, full name, is Cynthia Schmidt. She is the granddaughter of the Red Skull. Ooh. And she has solid red hair like the Red Skull. 
and, or well, like the Red Skull skull. Okay. Um, and yeah, and she she is so angry at the Red Skull for not only failing, but not having a bold enough vision. And so she tries to go the extra, the extra mile. And I think it's so perfect. It's such a great dynamic and such a great way to kind of reintroduce the Red Skull, give him more of a lasting legacy, fill some gaps, do kind of like a, do kind of like a reverse Rogue One. Wow. Yeah. And so what I would do, like as, as her introduction into the MCU, I would do the story of the Cosmic Cube where she works with AIM and they, they actually end up making like the Cosmic Cube and then she realizes that she could have Hydra win the war. But then not only that, but bring back the Red Skull and prove that she was the one to do it. Like she right. had the vision and the, the umph to do it. Oh man, this is beautiful. I like this. And then you could do Captain Carter, you can do Cat, you can do mm. you could do uh, Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson's Captain America, you could do uh, Steve Rogers' Captain America, you could do this big arc of this whole thing. And I would love, love, love to see that. I think I think it's such a brilliant character. You could do the Secret Avengers and have her be like have her trying to resurrect the Red Skull or something like that. Like you do all sorts of cool and creative things. I want to see what she looks like. She's talking. So <laughs> uh, I think it's a I think it's an interesting character. I would actually because I know believe me guys when I say like I've read the Secret Avengers, I know that it's more about Sung Chi and like the resurrection of Sung Chi's father. Um, but I think you could kind of play around with it a little bit and she could, she could actually work for the, the Mandarin. Um, oh damn. When Wu. Yeah. She's pretty awesome. She's pretty dope. Yeah. We'll, we'll show you guys a picture on, on that's, yeah, on that's the video cool. there. Uh, but I really think that she's an underused character and she could really bring back the Red Skull's legacy and yet have the same impact as the Red Skull in the MCP. It's saying her villain name is Sin. Yes. Sin. That's... Oh. Short for Cynthia. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Not a scratch, daughter. Not a scratch. She, but, she borrows his car to go up for prompts. <laughs> <laughs> but I really think that's a, such a fun dynamic. And like, you can have her work, like, you can have her work with Dr. Doom. You could do all sorts of cool things. And, and I, I just, I would love to see where it goes from there. For sure. You know what? Tell me what you think of this. You dye her hair red, you get Samara Weaving, his real life daughter, to play her. Oh, I would love that. Oh my God, yes. Give me more Samara Weaving. <laughs> uh, yeah, she would be perfect, honestly, for the role. I think she would be a, a fun character to do. And yeah, and, and again, in the MCU, it could you could do so, so much with that character. So, Cynthia. Cynthia Schmidt. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Well done. That's great list. Yeah, I know, right? Thank you. These are, these are lists. I hope you're listening, everybody who makes these decisions. Kevin, Nate, I know you guys are out there doing your production things. Mm -hmm. Listen to us. We know Samara Weaving would love to do stuff like that. <laughs> but you know D'Onofrio wants to come back. He said he wants to come back. Yeah. The Mojo thing is gift wrapped for you. Like, I don't know what else you need. You know, the Disney Day is coming up in November. You know, November 12th, 12th, baby. So We need to do a show on that one. Yeah, who knows what they'll announce, who they'll announce. But uh, we might get some of our wishes. That's why it was really like prudent to do this episode the soonest we could. Yes. Because things are going to keep being announced. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm hoping in a few weeks' time, we'll be pr out of these 20... Of which there's only one duplicate. So out of these 19 characters, we they have to be bringing at least one of them out. They have to. I, I think we've we've built a solid list about 19, almost yeah, 19 because we only got one. Yeah, one 20 right. if you count uh, Gyric and Trask. Yeah, 20 if you count Gyric, Gyric and Trash. Sorry, Trask. Um, so that being said, all right. So November 12th is the big announcement day. Mm -hmm. So from the last Disney Investor Day, they announced uh, so much. They announced a lot. Yes, they announced Moon Knight. They announced She Hulk. They announced no, no wait. She Hulk was before She Hulk was July 2019 when they announced her. They they announced the title of She Hulk 
but they announced the casting cast. of she uh, yeah. casting and director of she hulk mm-hmm. they announced hawkeye they announced um they announced wandavision loki they announced um falcon the winter soldier they announced uh group the holiday special thing they announced uh quantum mania guardians 3 uh doctor strange of multiverse of madness song chi uh eternals so but the big ones was this show trailers for were wandavision loki falcon winter soldier and then i think the black widow trailer because at that black point widow, it was yeah. ready. um so so i would say out of all like i'd say we've almost checked off the entire list the only thing we didn't see trailers for were hawkeye she hulk and moon knight Right. So we might see some trailers for those. I think we'll definitely see a final trailer for Spider-Man because Eternals will be out yeah. and will be there. Um, final trailer. I, I, I'm going to say my predictions are final trailer for Spider-Man. Uh, and then I'm going to say the trailer for She-Hulk because okay. I'm pretty sure production just wrapped, uh, like filming production just wrapped. So I'm sure they have enough dailies to build a trailer from. Moon Knight, I think we're going to get a teaser. Mm-hmm. Um, teaser trailer as well and then I think we're going to get a trailer for and I, I agree with you I, I think I said that final trailer for Spider-Man I think we're going to get the casting announcement of the Fantastic Four that would be something here's why I have a feeling apparently the end credit sequence for the Eternals is a big mic drop moment and no one mm. like no one's allowed to talk about it yeah I've heard about nothing. this nothing so my theory is they have casted the Fantastic Four, and we may get a nod, or we may actually see one of the members of the Fantastic Four. That's yeah, that would be something else. Because um, Eternals is all about space, cosmic, yeah. and Earth. So why wouldn't you? And you've already teased it in One Division. So why wouldn't you do it in the Eternals? Yeah, I think that's fair. And I think I will see your casting decision. Yeah. And I will add. I'll raise three more things. Um, a release date for Fantastic Four. <sighs> okay. A okay. teaser. Would this work? Yeah, a teaser mm-hmm. for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh yes, that's true too. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with I'm gonna I'm gonna meet you on that uh, one. Yeah. And then I'd say maybe just one because we have a pretty full docket, but just one new project we have never heard of before. Oh, okay, okay. Will, will it be the X Men? Do you think? Do you think we'll see X Men in this announcement? It, it's obviously it's obvious that we're not going to get uh, the like it actually being called X Men. Mm-hmm. I think that's obvious, but I think there's an announcement coming for X Men for sure. I think I don't think it'll be this one. Um, I feel like the the announcement will be maybe maybe an official logo and title for like Captain America 4 mm-hmm. or maybe um like an official logo and t- or they they would have a logo but an official title for Blade and something you know just something some new logo to add to the list kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to be quick here. Yeah, what do so you So we got? have Internal uh, Internals November 5th, Spider-Man December 17th, Doctor Strange May 6th, Thor July 8th, Wakanda Forever November 11th, 2022 which everyone's betting it's Namor. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be interesting. Then we have the Marvels, February 17th, 2023. Guardians, May 5th, 2023. Quantumania, July 25th, uh, 2023. And then we have one movie on November 3rd, 2023. That's untitled. And then we have some random 2024 untitled. We have four... In 2024, four titles that have, that are being uh, launched in 2024. I think that November one might be Blade because we've heard so much already about it. I think it's Fantastic Four. I think, it's Fantastic I think I think they're on the hunt to get that done as quickly as possible. Maybe because they they want to get the Fantastic Four out. Yeah, because you have you also have a Secret Invasion. That's another trailer. I think we're gonna get. Oh my god! You think we're gonna? Get- oh no! Sorry, not a trailer. But I think we're gonna get a full cast announcement. Wow! Including oh, including. Including story synopsis and villain. Wow! I hope I wish you were running the show. Um, I wish. I think I wish I could stand beside Kevin when he did it Investors Day. I think it'll be a smaller 
like slate of new things than it was last year because I feel like this year there's going to be a lot more Star Wars stuff to talk about. Um, 2021 was a dry year for Star Wars. You had Bad Batch and some books, and that's it. So I feel like Investor Day this November, they're going to have a lot to talk about because not only do they have Boba Fett coming out, but you've got Mando Season 3, you've got Andor, and you've got Obi-Wan. Um, Ahsoka. Ahsoka, which they just announced Hayden Christensen is in now. Um, and I'm sure they will announce something new as well, um, which they didn't did they do last year. Oh, yeah, they just said Rogue Squadron is the thing. That's pretty much it. Um, so I think we'll get more meaty Star Wars stuff this year as opposed to Marvel, because Marvel has a pretty full docket already of stuff we haven't seen anything yet. So... But I, I, I like where our heads are at. And I think this is this is what's going to happen. It's going to be interesting. I'm telling you guys, November 12th, we'll do a video on it. We'll do a recap of all the exciting announcements. And maybe we'll catch up on what predictions we made. But I'm telling you, November 12th is going to be big for Marvel. And Marvel's on a big... Marvel has been, on, has been doing this marathon now for a while. They're well into... You know, they're not even competing. The only person they're competing with is themselves. So they have to maintain that, that, that pace that they're going. So I think they're going to come out pretty hard and they're going to drop some pretty big announcements. But I, I wanted, the one I'm most excited about is I think they're going to announce the entire cast of Fantastic Four. That would be... Including the villain. They're going to mention who the villain is. You ever see those... Uh, those the old it's going to be Wizard. Yeah, I would totally be down for Wizard. You know how they show like old footage of the Beatles playing like Ed Sullivan or whatever and there's the girls like... I feel like that would be us if we were at one of these events. Like Feige's like, hey, you guys want to see the cast for Fantastic Four? <laughs> just like head explodes. You're weeping. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps trying to tell us the cast, but you just keep screaming and they can't get it. Funny enough, funny enough, my wife has never seen me cry, which is kind of a weird thing to say. But I guarantee you, if that was the case, I would totally cry. You cried at your wedding. I was there, there. There's some there's some water. There's water buildup, but whether or not the buildup like led to full on tears is a different story. I got emotional. That's mm -hmm. that's the best way to say. It. Anyway, case in point, I think we're gonna get a Fantastic Four casting and plus villain. And I might go as far as to say we may not get Emily Blunt as Invisible Woman. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get John Krasinski as. Invisible I think Blunt. that's a bet. Yeah, Emily's not into it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I liked my pick of Evan Rachel Wood. I think she'd make a great Invisible Woman. Yeah, and her and her name also starts with E. So. Mm -hmm. We're halfway there. We're halfway there. <laughs> wow. So this has been a great Halloween Infinity rewatch. Yeah. Boo! No! Oh! 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 I'm sorry. Oh! I frightened everybody. Uh, what villains did we leave out? Let us know. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure you guys have some pretty good guesses. I've seen some lists. Mm. Some of them are pretty good. Did you have any honorable mentions that you almost added? I did. Uh, I want to see Lady Deathstrike. Ooh. Lady Deathstrike and the Ravengers. Ravengers? Ravagers. 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 Okay. Because they would be fun to discover other alien races on Earth and thus branch out to Guardian story arcs and yeah. what have you. So I thought they would be a fun bunch. Um, another villain I wanted was Strife. Um, do you know who I'm talking about? Yes, the evil looking uh, Wolverine guy. Who's, yes. He looks like Wolverine, but he's he's All actually metallic. Cable. But yeah. he's he's a yeah. future he's a future evil Cable who wants to redeem himself, so he sends Cable back in time to go do the thing. Yeah. But he has the techno virus and like the whole thing. But I would love to see a MCU version of that because that would be a fun Days of Future Past story arc to kind of play around with. So yeah, I want to like strip. Those are my those are my big ones. I was gonna say Apocalypse, but the problem with Apocalypse, not only do you not like him, but I think problem is, is he's been done. Like, he's a big villain, and he's been done. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I think he was done in such a way, and it's not even Oscar's fault. I, I just don't think it was the right... The writing wasn't there. The director was not there. And I just don't think it was the right character to introduce. But um, I was going to say things like Magneto, but I feel like he's coming. It's kind of hard not to do... Magneto. And not only is he coming, but we've had two Magnetos who were both magnificent. So oh, if we, yeah. if Kevin, for whatever reason, is like, I'm not touching Magneto. I wouldn't blame him. We, yeah, we have, we're fine. Yeah. We're fine for Magneto. I think, honestly, first class gave me the Magneto I've always wanted to see, period. Oh, yeah. Like, literally, period. Like, 
I don't like I even in the first X Men movie I got the magneto magneto I wanted to see and it was perfect. That moment in Cuba where he like throws the knife. <laughs> yeah, <it's, laughs> yeah. But then, like, there's that moment, and then my other favorite moment, which I'll quickly wrap up here, is in the first X Men movie where he like lifts the cars and flips them over and then sends all the guns out and has all the humanity literally hostage in one one scene. Yeah, that's right. Magneto has been done. He's yeah. great. Uh, I I had two honorable mentions. One of them was. Mephisto, just because, like, at this point, just seeing him would be fun. Uh, but the other one was along the same lines as yours. Uh, somebody who we've seen twice, but I don't feel like I liked either of them, and that was Sabretooth. Of course. Yeah. I would love... I don't know, though, because Liam Shriver was pretty good. He was a pretty good... He was a, he was a great Sabretooth in a terrible movie. He was a great Sabretooth character in a terrible movie, and he looked nothing like Sabretooth. So you take that character he played, you make him look like Tyler Maine. Now we're talking. You give him brown and yellow. Now we're talking. Yeah. I think though, I don't know because that, that saber tooth is hard to do. I don't think we'll see that kind of saber tooth in an MCU. I think we'll see the ultimate version of saber tooth, which is essentially a trench coat and like long. Oh long no, hair. I don't want a trench coat. Yeah. That was another one I was going to mention as last honorable mention for me was uh, uh, Cornelius. Fudge from Harry Potter? No, Doctor, I think, it's, of magic. I think it's Dr. Cornelius, uh, the guy who created the Weapon X program. Oh, okay. All I know is uh, Striker. I don't know who Cornelius is. Uh, he was He's the bald guy, and he wears these really like thin glasses. Oh, and he made like Alpha Flight, and then... Yeah. Uh, okay. No, 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 he didn't make Alpha Flight. He didn't make Alpha Flight. That's Department H. Yes. He, Dr. Cornelius, invented the Weapon X program. He created uh, Wolverine. He, he worked with the doctor, the Japanese doctor, to create the, the program to give them the animantium bones. Um, but Dr. Cornelius was, uh, he also had, um, you saw, did you not, do you not remember the uh, X-Men episode? Uh, we Weapon X Lies and Videotapes, where they all go back to the past and see all their memories? Yes. There was a guy on the video screen, that's Dr. Cornelius. Oh, uh, okay. All right. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but... Anyways, that was an honorable mention because I think he would also be a fun way to introduce Wolverine into the MCU and kind of bring back that whole experience. Oh, nice. Um, I want Hugh Jackman back. I'm sorry, bring him out of retirement. I don't care. I don't care how old. I don't care how old he he is, or he's if he's not old enough to play the role. It's okay. He doesn't have to be like you know have a twenty pack and be super jacked. You can make him like a really beastly looking. Yeah. Dude, just give him the yellow shirt. He doesn't. He just never has to take it off if he doesn't want. To. Dude, yeah, you do whatever you want. But anyway, that's that's my last honorable mention. I'm I'm done. What if Hugh Jackman called you right now, and when you picked up, all he said was, -na 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 -na. "I would then tag this video and be like, this is the best day of my life." <laughs> you throw out your wedding photo, and be like, "We have a new champion." <laughs> I don't know if I'd go that far, but I, I, I would put it maybe beside or under, next to my photo of me and Stan Lee. I don't know. <laughs> well, great Halloween episode. Great Halloween episode. It was a fun one. I've got an orange tie. We're in the mood. We're ready. So I hope all of you, and I hope you especially, have a marvelous Halloween and a marvelous day, too. Why not? Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.